The main vision for our lab is really to bring the basic research together with translational research and clinical science. So in our lab we are approximately 60 people and we are all from different areas of science. We have people coming from all over the world. That's something I think that's very unique here. And we are having biologists, chemists, detector physics, engineers, and we have people from so many different backgrounds that work together and try to solve one particular problem. The big advantage of our institute is definitely that we have a lot of people and it's a very heterogeneous um, surrounding. So therefore we focus on the different errors, imaging errors, uh, especially oncology, neurology, cardiovascular diseases. But we also focus in errors like immunology and infectious diseases. I think especially those errors are extremely important and emerging errors and uh, should be really taken care of uh, from the field of imaging science. My work mainly includes um, preclinical animal models, so I'm mainly working with Parkinson's disease, neurodegenerative diseases like dementia, and we are working on the development of a pet tracer to image alpha-cytokine in the brain, for example. So our main focus is to look at animal models or develop new tracers that then can be translated to the clinics. We have experience in imaging amyloid. And we have, we have also clinical partners that have a lot of experience in imaging amyloid. We're developing our own fluorine-18 labeled compound and our ultimate goal, what is currently not possible with the compounds that are in the market, is to image parenchymal amyloid and vascular amyloid separately from each other and to quantify these both. We started to work together with immunologists, we started to work together with neurologists and we really saw that we can push imaging far beyond of radiology and nuclear medicine. It meant also that we bring out imaging to other disciplines and that other disciplines profit from imaging and that other disciplines and other colleagues learn what are the advantages and the benefits of imaging. I'm a group leader in oncology now, focusing on uh, metabolism and pathways. And uh, what uh, my group is uh, trying to do is to uh, link imaging data to proteomics and metabolomics data. Primarily I'm working with a pet. Here we use radioactive cell labeling methods for different kinds of cells like T-cells or myeloid-derived suppressor cells. Then we adoptively transfer these labeled cells and can track them with a PET. So probably one of the greatest achievements of our institute was the development of the PET-MR scanner for performing simultaneous PET-MR studies also in mice. So with our new infrastructure, starting from the new radio pharmacy, our new imaging facility and our new clinical translation group, we can easily bring new targets into the clinic. So we start developing the probes in the radio pharmacy, the first testing in the mice, and then the first in human use in the clinic. So this is really a quick process. Imaging um, infectious diseases is very interesting using PET-MR so that we can image the living organism in another living organism having the host and the pathogen and then consecutive imaging allows the uh, dynamic imaging of the progression of the disease. So we try to image the pathogen itself via antibodies or other targets and then compare this with the unspecific tracers, for example, the glucose marker FDG. Inflammation is a big issue, especially if you look at the patients with rheumatoid arthritis. 2% of the world population is suffering from rheumatoid arthritis and therefore it's very, uh, really cost-intensive 
uh, disease for every health system worldwide. We have uh, several um, models for inflammation, such as lung inflammation, rheumatoid arthritis, contact hypersensitivity, reaction models, and we have a model who enables us for T-cell-based immunotherapy in cancer. So we have a broad spectrum of isotopes we can use depending on the half-life that's suitable for the respective molecule. So if, if you have small molecules, you want to have short living isotopes. If you go for biologicals or antibodies, then we want to have a long half-life. So for neurotracers, for example, we focus mainly on carbon-11 chemistry, but um, then also for inflammation or for antibody-based immunopets, we go for longer-lived half-lives like copper-64 and zirconium-89. So just very recently we opened our new GMP lab, GMP facility, with a, it's divided into two labs with five hot cells for synthesis each, so ten hot cells for synthesis and two isolators, and we're quite happy about it. It is especially important that we cover all those fields with imaging, that we cover all those fields in one single lab because we have we really gain advantages uh, that we learn from one field to the other. I love the science, I love to come here and I love to spend a lot of work on, on Alzheimer's disease research, it's just exciting. I think you can learn from one disease and use it for, for other diseases as well. If you have ideas in the imaging field or in science, you can easily work on new experiments and perform them in this infrastructure. I think it's the great freedom you have here, the freedom and, and, and independency that you really, if, if you're interested in something, you can just do it. This is our lab. 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 This is our lab.